Well, we're uh, back here, fourth annual symposium. Dr. Bales doesn't need any introduction. Anybody in the industry knows him, but I will still let you introduce yourself and what you're doing here and why you came out to uh, help with this event and support us. And so, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, my name is Allison Bales, and I have a company called Energy Vanguard. I we do third-party HVAC design, so we're heavily involved in the mechanical side of things. Mm -hmm. But we also promote general um, good building science practices, mm -hmm. and I've written a book about that. All right, so tell uh, me about your book. So the book is called A House Needs to Breathe, okay. or Does It? And it covers a lot of the basic building science. So it's not just about this this question. Uh, that's um, Where there's a lot of debate and a, a lot of misunderstanding yep. about a house needing to breathe. Yeah, um, that's, that's uh, one part of the book, an important part of the book, because air leakage causes lots of problems, and we don't want leaky houses, we yeah. want airtight houses, and the, the reason for the title is that the, uh, I, I've talked to a lot of builders who have told me, oh, we shouldn't seal up a house too tight, a house needs to breathe, mm -hmm. and that just drives Heard me crazy lot. every time, mm -hmm. because no, we want airtight houses, because if you leave the house leaky, you're letting air in through random leaks in the building enclosure, are you really getting good air? Right. That air coming from the moldy crawl space is not the kind of air you right. want to be breathing. That air coming from the garage with the gasoline and the pesticides and the exhaust fumes is not the air you want in the house. Yeah. So, or through a wall channel where you have insulation and anything else that was used to build the house. Is, yeah. yeah so it's we want to we want to um, have an airtight house because there's bad stuff outside the living space that we don't want in the air in the house. So we want airtight. So a house does not need to breathe in that way. Mm. And, um, I, and uh, you know, I don't make a secret of the answer to that question uh -huh. in the title. <laughs> I, I think I, it's page 23 that I provide the answer. You okay. Know, no, a house doesn't need to breathe. Page Pe 23. People need to breathe. And there's a great um, uh, saying, a guy in New Zealand told me this once, and I love it. If you find yourself inside something that's breathing, uh -huh. get out. You've been eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you uh, don't want to be inside something that's breathing. That's great. So um, yeah, that's so. Uh, then the concern of an airtight house is: is my air going to get stale, or, or is there going to be unhealthy things that develop from the inside of that house? Like, what's the solution? So it goes back to your talk that you just gave. The talk I gave yesterday was about ventilation, solving the ventilation puzzle. But I started off talking about indoor air quality because okay. ventilation is just one piece okay. um, of the of solving that puzzle, and the. The real answer is, I mean, you know, air tightness. We want airtight houses to keep the bad stuff from from the buffer spaces and from the outdoors out of the indoor air. Yeah. And then we want um, source control. Okay. Because you know you bring uh, stuff into the house. A lot of times uh, you use materials in the house, adhesives, yeah. and sealants, and you, know, you install carpet and all these things off gas and put bad stuff in the air. Well, if you be a little more careful about what you bring in, that's source control. That would help too, yeah. And there's a, a great quote for that um, from a German guy from the 19th century. He said something like, if you have a pile of manure in your uh, building, don't try to ventilate to solve the problem. Just remove the pile of manure. That's good. That's source control. <laughs> yeah. And so you got air tightness, source control, and moisture control. When you, in Florida, yeah. you know, where we are now, world. in the yeah. southeast, and where you feel it a, right now. <laughs> in a humid climate, you definitely need lots of source control, uh, not, uh, moisture control. Mm -hmm. And even in dry climates, though, you need moisture control because it rains, it snows, mm -hmm. and that liquid water can cause more problems than than human uh, humidity can yeah. a lot of times. You got to solve that. So air tightness, source control, moisture control. Then filtration. Okay. We want MERV 13 filtration, and you can do that with low pressure drop. I, you know, we do it in our designs that we provide to people. I've done it in my house. We've done it in our office. You can get MERV 13 filtration with with 0 0.05, 0 0.06 inch of water column pressure drop. We do it all the time. That's in my house, um, and you have to just size it properly. Yeah. Two square feet per ton is our rule, but um, that's that's the fourth piece of this layered approach to indoor air quality. Yeah. Air tightness, source control, moisture control, filtration, and then ventilation. I said ventilation is the last one because you got to do these other things first. You, if you want, but if you have an airtight house, you gotta you gotta have whole house mechanical ventilation as well. Okay. 
All right. There's a lot of different ways to do that, and I talked about some of those yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of the, I mean, all of these we're doing on some level already, and we're trying to solve these problems already, but it's the intentionality of like, we're building houses tighter and tighter now, which is good, finally. Yes. People are actually starting to do this. and. I'm, I'm crawling into, crawl spit, into attics now that have had actually foam sprayed and, and I'm happy I'm working in a space that's actually conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yes, then what well, we still have all of our basic problems that you talked about there with uh, humidity, with source control, with filtration. And I like that you say that you line it up the way you do. Like these things are first. Don't just try to jump to that fancy ventilation yeah. machinery and, and expect it to solve all the other problems that right. you already already have to deal with. So, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, how's the event been so far? That's been great, man. Brian um, and, and you guys at Kalos do a fantastic job putting this together, bringing in you know a lot of the really best people in the industry, yeah. and and getting people who are out in the field every day yeah. to come here and and learn new stuff and and take it back and put it into practice. So yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful event. So uh, I'm asking a lot of people speaking here uh, to give some top uh, tips that you have for technicians. So we have technicians that are gonna be watching this that aren't here, that should definitely be here next year. And so um, just wanted to hear what are some top tips that on the fly that come to mind for, for technicians? Um, no. So number one, I would say, don't believe everything that you're told. Okay. Um, you know, people get told, oh, you can't ever put a MERV 13 filter in because that's, you know, it's going to use too much energy, the pressure yeah. drop's going to be too high, you're going to, you know, It's hard on your system. AC, it's going to work too hard, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you can you can put in MERV 13 and get low pressure drop and everything will work great and you'll get cleaner air, but you have to size it properly. So yeah. you got to you got to consider the bigger picture. You actually so, have to know your surface. Yeah. You just enlarge your surface space with the filter. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You want you want low face velocity yeah. across that filter, okay. and then you can you can you know have a smaller duct behind it, and then the, that increases the speed. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. So don't believe everything you're told. Yeah. And there's a lot That's of good. stuff out there that you know gets passed down from you know one tech generation to the next. Yes. And uh, you know a lot of it's based on on things that aren't true or, and some, sometimes they never were true yeah so it's good that, that would that would be one of them um, another one keep learning there's yeah. a lot of good information out there things are changing quickly houses are changing as, as you mentioned you know we have uh, more airtight houses now yeah. codes in a lot of places requires blower door testing yeah and you have to meet this threshold you have to be you know a certain level of airtightness so it's good. Um, keep learning and um, and come back next year. <laughs> come back next year, I love it. Yeah. Great, yeah. Well, appreciate you coming here and supporting us. It's an honor just to have you at the event. Yeah. And I hope you get to have some good conversations and you get good feedback here. I mean, this is the place to hear from people like, and solid conversations, solid debates. It's already been happening out here. I've been loving it, so. Yeah, but, yeah appreciate it. Thanks good. for coming uh, out. Thanks, Bert. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind, hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.